cottage cheese appearance okay guys interesting so I don't know if you've ever seen cottage cheese or your destroyer looks clumpy. It's very different from the creamy white consistency that you have leading up to your period. It's still very slimy and it's just a little thicker. Cottage cheese consistency is literally clumps. Your discharge is coming out in clumps. This signifies a fungal infection and the most common fungal infection that females develop yeast infection guys so if it is that you see that happening and normally it's the discharge the cottage cheese discharge is accompanied by itching and burning in the vagina and the vulva so it can be the lips the outer lips the inner lips or you literally feel like there is an itch on the inside so that all of that signifies yeast infection a little further down in the video we're going to be talking about when to visit the doctor how to treat these things but just to know that some alarm bells should be going off in your head cottage cheese consistency is just like and sometimes what can happen the discharge will reflect that before you have the itching and the burning or they come together or the itching and the burning comes first but it's good to know that once you see that type of a look with your discharge fungal infection there are many different um um, fungal fungi many different types of fungal infection the most popular one the one that most females normally end up with is yeast infection we'll discuss that a little bit more finally finally on the topic of discharge we have um, discharge that is gray I wish I had something to compare this one to because it's kind it's it's hard to spot especially if you don't pay attention it's it's a grayish discharge but not to fear because this gray discharge comes with an ammonia like smell if you're like me never really do so well with chemistry can't remember what ammonia smells like it's fishy or it's metallic like a blood scent that you have with your period so that fishy scent ammonia like scent metallic like scent and gray discharge there is a change in your pH in your vagina and I cannot tell you how important it is to maintain your acidic pH. Your vagina is delicate. It operates at best in controlling the bacteria, everything on the inside that's an acidic pH. When you start to have that fishy scent, metallic scent, gray discharge, your pH has changed. And the most common disease that results from a change in the pH in the vagina is bacterial vaginosis. Terrible. It comes with itching and burning as well. And there are a lot of things that can throw off a woman's pH. The most, the most common cause of bacterial vaginosis is semen. So a man ejaculating into you can throw off your pH because semen is alkaline, basic, completely on, a, on the other end of the scale when it comes on to acidity. So we are over here and a, man, a man's semen is over here. When it enters the vagina, it can disrupt that pH and it can lead to bacterial vaginosis. So guys, and douching is the second leading cause of that sticking that thing up there to clean it out so be mindful of that that's your discharge we know what normal looks like we know when it's okay we know that some slight changes can occur based on our period and what's going on we know what abnormal looks like and when it's but we should be saying mm -mm, let me call up my home girl my OBGYN because okay so we're at the good part all of it is good but the doctor <laughs> For some reason, no we not like got a doctor, guys. Fem I'm gonna talk to you, mama. Mama Risa with the girls. I know just overall, we don't think anything can ever happen to us and we don't believe it can happen to us until it happens to us. What I'm about to share with you, it's information, like I said, there's no secret societies out there. It's, it's something that you should respect and act on. Okay the doctor when to see the doctor and all of that jazz let me go mm -hmm. females were supposed to visit the gynecologist the OBGYN once a year especially females who are sexually active 
we should be getting our pelvic check which includes a pap smear at least once a year if there's anything that's happening that indicates the need to go more than once then you do so as well but at least once a year you need to be rolling up into your gynecologist's um, office normally we tell um, girls that you start your gynecologist visits around 21 sooner if you are sexually active and you visit them yearly up until menopause or rather more correctly guys 65 66 thereabouts every year once a year and just to talk a bit more about your pelvic exam and pap smear i think we've heard this at this point we've all heard like oh get your pap smear i think i got I have a picture phone. <laughs> I have a picture phone, guys. I got a picture for y'all. Mm -hmm. So, before we get into the pap smear and what that is, your pelvic exam is important because what the gynecologists check for, it check they check the shape, size, location of your uterus. They look at your vulva. You need to look at your vulva. Get a mirror. <laughs> get a mirror, girls. Be a be mindful you need to know when something is wrong with you your partner shouldn't be the first one pointing out that what would that come from that wasn't there before so you need to be acquainted with your vulva as well but when you go to the gynecologist they check the vulva the color of it the consistency like the skin in that area what's going on they check the inside they check your vagina they check your um uterus like i said just to ensure that everything is in proper proper shape your pap smear is important because what a pap smear checks for is cervical cancer and cervical cancer is the only cancer that can be detected super early all cancer is is abnormal how would i put it abnormal division in cells cells normally divide there are some cells that have abnormal behavior that leads to cancer cancer isn't um, another organism entering your body your own cells start to behave abnormally for whatever reason um, Normally you have to have a certain amount of abnormal cells before you can detect that. Oh, wow This this is cancerous with cervical cancer It's it's easily detected because you can literally collect cells from the cervix. Do you remember where the cervix is? Here you can collect cells from here the cervix that that's the entrance to your uterus they literally get the little it's kind of like a covid test if you guys have ever done that they get a little cotton swab and they swipe if there's a slightest abnormality in those cells they can detect it and we can act on it right away it is important and uh, that's a lot to get into when it comes down to the vagina there's a world but let's let's get into this part of it pap smear this is what it looks like guys let me get up close right here i wanted these in color but uh, you know homegirl never have the colored ink let's focus this is what a pap smear looks like for visualizing purposes this is a female lying on her back this right here is the uterus and this is the vagina here you can see the doctor has taken out the swab and there is um, this, this tool that's inserted and it's used to hold the vagina open while the doctor inserts the swab. I want you guys to see that. The doctor inserts the swab and he collects the cells from the cervix right here. Is they insert this it holds the vagina open they collect the sample they needed and they check it to see if there's anything abnormal going on with your cells and you can be notified right away so it's really important that guys you do that I said we were going to talk about yeast and yeast infection so when it comes on to yeast infection preventing it like i said the vagina is very delicate she's so bougie proper hygiene 
safe sex, practice safe sex, use a condom, whether it's with your partner, you only have one partner or otherwise, remember that semen isn't healthy for your vagina unless you're trying to conceive avoid having your partner ejaculate inside your vagina as much as possible you have to have your clean breathable underwear avoid scented soaps get feminine washes stuff that's designed to keep in mind your delicate ph don't just use any random so your dalan and your dove and they weren't made to keep in mind that okay we need to maintain the pH. so if you have to use soap avoid scented soap and try to get soaps that's designed for down there um girls pads we're talking about preventing yeast infection pads have a certain amount of hours that they should be wear worn pads and tampons adhere to those instructions please um if you are having sex and you need to use lubricant use a water-based lubricant instead of i think it's oil they have other stuff that's like the best ingredient the base ingredient for the lubricant ensure that your lubricant is water-based and of course like i said no douching yeast infections are i want to say easily treated because you have over-the-counter um creams that you can use to apply to ensure that that's it's taken care of and for most females we can self-diagnose we don't necessarily need to go to a gynecologist because you've it's either you've had it before and it's been diagnosed so you can identify the symptoms or whatever the situation is however bear in mind it is important to know if you have a yeast infection more than three times in one year get to the doctor something is causing the yeast infection and if you don't deal with the root problem of the yeast infection, it's going to keep coming back and it can get worse. If you've used over-the-counter cream or any form of medication and there you find that there's no relief with your yeast infection, also get to the doctor. And if you have any medical your condition, your immune system, that makes it hard to fight any type of infection. HIV does that, get to the doctor as well. All right, guys. So. It's important to get yourself checked out when you need to get yourself checked out and also keep yourself acquainted with what's going on down there, the scent, the look of it, so you know when something is off. Yeah? All right, so the last thing that we'll be talking about today I'm is um, just a touch, oh gosh, this topic, sex and your vagina, is a whole thing to itself, but there are just a few um important pointers i've mentioned this before girls semen no no or vagina treats it like a disease the minute the vagina detects that there is semen there it sends its bacteria its defenses to go and destroy it that's the reason why a man's penis is long because the penis needs to get as close to this area as possible so that the semen has a chance to get to the egg that's lodged in here the minute semen enters the vagina homegirl says no and she's killing them so they need to get as close as possible to swim as fast as possible when it comes on to sex bear in mind it's cute to say oh come in a mirror say, whatever it is oh, it's nice come in a mirror nice. whatever it is it's Oh, come in a mirror, whatever it is, it's whatever nice, it is, it's, it's nice, but it's not nice for the vagina. Please avoid it if you can, unless you're trying to conceive, like I said before. Um, pre-sex requirements, there aren't any girls, just ensure that it's clean. It's common courtesy just to be clean. Post-sex, it's very important after sex that you pee, you urinate. And simply put, what happens is, remember the urethra, the urethral opening, that little hole that has to do with urine and urination, is close to the vagina. So vagina, the vagina, well, actually sex, let's, let's start there. So sex has a lot of friction and sweat involved. And what happens is that there is the possibility that with all that friction and sweat, that bacteria eventually gets within that area. 
unlike the male reproductive system, the distance between the opening of our bladder and our bladder is really short. We call that distance that little tube that connects the outside to the bladder, we call that the urethra. Our urethra is short. A man's urethra is long. So even if there is bacteria on the outside of the man's penis, it's highly unlikely that it's going to get to the bladder to cause an infection, but our urethra is short. So if there is possibly bacteria on the outside within the urethral opening and that bacteria gets into the urethra, in no time it's in our bladder and we end up with a urinary tract infection. So in order to prevent urinary tract infection, once you've had sex, ma'am, sit on the toilet until you're able to pee. Once you've peed, wipe from front to back like we've discussed and go on about your merry ways. To end today's video, we're going to be talking about like just not really talking about we're just going to be listing some myths associated with the vagina these things are not true one of the most common myths is that you need to shave your pubic hair quite the contrary sweetheart it's more so a preference some people believe that you have to shave your pubic hair to be clean no ma'am your pubic hair is there to help prevent infection in the same way that the hair in your nose if there's dust or pollen entering your nose it traps it and it doesn't get any further to cause any problem with your nasal cavity or whatever it is your pubic hair helps to keep infection away and it's that's all you need to do that's the purpose of the pubic hair prevents infection if you want to ch um to shave it and that's just a preference that's okay but you don't need to shave it for it to be clean most gynecologists recommend trimming the hair more so than completely removing it again girl it's your preference but you just have to be mindful of the fact that homegirl is just weird now so be more um protective loose versus tight vagina sex cannot loosen your vagina that's that's going to take a whole other getting into what no ma'am your vagina is designed to stretch enough to deliver a baby and go back to its original size sex does not loosen your vagina there's no such thing as a loose versus tight vagina it is muscle there is such a thing as muscle accommodation and your muscle eventually because it has memory muscle memory and you have memorized how to adapt to having sex there's no such thing as loose or tight vagina that's a whole other thing girl the virginity test is fake there is no way that a doctor can check or prove or that you've lost your virginity whole other thing we talk about hymen and all of that it is not true a doctor cannot put his hand her hand anywhere and, and say that oh you've been having sex the only way the only sure way to find out if you've been having sex is to ask you have you been having sex and lastly guys discoloration in your pubic area is normal it's a side effect of puberty. There are hormones that, is really, that are released into your bloodstream that cause the hair to grow and all of that. Those hormones also contribute to the discoloration that you see under your arm, in between your thighs, in your pubic area. You don't need to bleach, girl. You don't need to bleach it, tone it, whatever it is to match the rest of your skin. It's normal and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Alrighty, I really hope that this discussion it's <laughs> i try to keep it brief oh god i try to keep it brief um i really hope that it helped i really hope that it prompts you to find out more i hope that it prompts you to take action and i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day thank you so much for having me bye guys <laughs>